Well, surprise, Joe Biden hates America. Well, you're not surprised. Well, it would be a surprise if it weren't such a non-surprise. Joe Biden cares far more about other countries than he does about this one, doesn't he? And Joe Biden only leaves this cushy confines of his Delaware home, classified documents and all, Corvette, if it serves a particular agenda that puts America and America's needs not first but last. The president has a long history of making very specific choices about what he chooses to focus on, about where he chooses to focus his attention, money, and interests. The green agenda. Places where he has the most success as a candidate. The race agenda. The progressive liberal agenda. Pay attention to where Joe Biden chooses to go and be presidential. And when he chooses to hide out in his Delaware enclave, it's not difficult to understand the president's priorities, certain cities, certain states, certain agendas, for whatever reason, those just don't matter. If we're lucky, Biden's inept, dishonest mouthpiece, Corinne Jean-Pierre, will deflect a few questions about the topics that don't interest him or that he doesn't have time to answer. But make no mistake about it, a president this decrepit, this feeble, has to make clear choices. Joe only has so much energy to go around and attention in between naps. And the choices made in his presidency speak loudly, speak clearly about what matters to him. America and Americans matter least when they don't serve Joe Biden's limited agenda. November 2021, the city of Waukesha, Wisconsin, a man drove his car into a crowd killing six people during a Christmas parade. Joe Biden, the president, never visited to hold their hands. And why? Well, not his agenda, not his narrative. Can't call for a ban on cars, right? So it wasn't the gun used by the perpetrator. Doesn't suit his agenda. Yawn, moving on. February 2022, a year ago, two New York City cops killed days apart. A sea of New York City's finest men and women in blue filled the streets of Manhattan. What a sight that was. Joe Biden, the president, didn't attend. And why? Well, not his agenda. He can't outright support soft on crime policies, support a defund the police narrative, and then sit amongst the sea of blue, a sea of mourning. One of New York's finest, one of our bravest, doesn't suit his agenda. Moving on. And today, it's President's Day, and a day, President's Day, we're supposed to honor the strength in the White House. Sadly, not only do we have a president who is incompetent, and in cognitive decline, but we have one who's far too compromised to stand up for our own country before all others. We have a president so obsessed with marking false achievements that he ignores Americans in need. This is a president who's not for Americans or America. It's Joe Biden against America, actually, plain and simple. It's Joe Biden against every single thing we stand for. Everything, everything that makes us strong, makes us proud makes us prosperous, and they really, really want to destroy American exceptionalism. How quickly we've lost our pride in our country and our hope. It's Joe Biden against America that's the only way to explain this. It's the only way I can explain how hard and fast we've fallen. And now the question is why? Why push an unattainable, unrealistic Green New Deal agenda at the expense of so many Americans? Why continue to embarrass our country on a global stage? Why put other countries' needs before ours? Because when we have less, we need government more. When we have less, we rely on government more. And that makes them more powerful and have more control over us. When we can't defend ourselves because they've taken our guns and our constitutional right to bear arms, we then rely on others to do it for us. It was too much for them what was going on when we were growing more independent from foreign powers, from foreign oil and products. Today, Biden made another attempt to look presidential when we learned this morning of his surprise visit to Ukraine. Today, well, he may have looked presidential to Zelensky, but not to these guys right here. If only he pledged that same support to the people of East Palestine, Ohio the same ones he initially turned down financial support for. Joe Biden most likely knew then that he was flying to Ukraine to pledge another $500 million if only Joe Biden pledged that money to Americans with as much ease and gusto as he pledges it to countries thousands of miles away, if only.
What are the people of East Palestine supposed to think when they feel so completely abandoned by Joe Biden, by Pete Buttigieg, by an administration that so clearly wants nothing to do with them and will do nothing at all to help support them? What kind of message is Joe Biden trying to send Americans? Today, President's Day, our own president makes it difficult to honor this day. It's hard to do so when our own president shows more love thousands of miles away than he has ever shown right here at home. I mean, he took this day, an exclusively American holiday, to leave American soil and try to look presidential for foreigners. Doesn't that pretty much sum it all up? In some respect, I can't really blame Joe Biden for looking for love in Ukraine on President's Day, though. Ukraine must love him a lot, a lot more than we do. I mean, where else will the big guy find as much love and adulation than from a nation he's given so much money, so much time and resources to? Ukraine has seen the best side of Joe Biden, although we see it as the worst. The way Joe Biden willingly gives away so much, much of our tax dollars while giving very little to us right here. Naturally, the big guy wouldn't find himself being loved anywhere near as much right here at home on a day like today, unless, of course, he filled a room with illegal migrants he brought in to vote for him. Meanwhile, Joe Biden travels far to accept love for protecting the sovereignty of other countries. He's given away our own sovereignty quietly. While Americans, many Americans, are distracted with their midwinter breaks, Joe Biden is preparing to sign the U.S. up to an accord with the World Health Organization. This would be another international cooperation with the WHO. They would have, to, they would have the authority to dictate our policies during a pandemic. So you see, if you won't follow their president, President Biden and his agencies, because we no longer trust them, I guess why not give some or more of our power to an international organization, like a good little New World Order soldier? And meanwhile, China and Russia, two of our biggest adversaries, are signing cushy deals, getting closer and closer to each other, together planning the demise of America. On President's Day, our sitting president made it all too clear what his priorities are and where the needs of Americans fall on that list of priorities. Mr. President, we understand that there are wars being fought abroad and Godspeed to those on the right side of history, but there are plenty of wars we're fighting right here at home still waiting to get your attention where it's really needed. A little more love to this side of the Atlantic would be much appreciated to many, sir. But don't worry, though. For now, 45 will help fill the void that you leave behind.